are listening to the Crooked Hearts Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Andy the Pie Deal. Coming to you with our first episode of Pie and the Crooked Hearts podcast. We are very excited for this first episode here. Been looking forward to it. Got some local talent that we would like to be showcasing. That's the basic gist of the show here. Um, Local musicians, artists, songwriters, instructors, anything that encompasses the music scene here in this local town of Temecula, California. We uh, have some episodes in the can we will be kind of promoting that as we come up some really great conversations that we've had with some of the local talent here uh we do have a local band here that we will have on this first episode but quick just as i said of the show is just uh, the supporting of local artists and just showcasing the local talent uh we will be getting into many different conversations about gear, band, songwriting, ins and outs of just performing and you know some of the good times, bad times and ups and downs that musicians and bands go through uh on their course to whatever their journey may be. So looking forward to the many episodes to come. We will be promoting each band uh, at the end of each episode, just to let a little insight into what's going on with each of these bands and artists that we will be showcasing. So, uh, looking forward to it. Uh, Hope you guys can just sit back, relax, like I said, maybe uh, have a laugh, maybe have some insight into something you didn't know, might learn something if you're listening hard enough. Thank you very much for uh, participating in uh, the episode here for my guests, and uh, we'll get into all that goodies on that. Thank you so much for the listeners who are tuning in, and enjoy. How are we doing? We're doing pretty good. Excellent. Okay, so this is your guys' first podcast interview, I'm assuming? Yeah, yes, and sir. recording. <laughs> Excellent. All right. All right, guys. Well, welcome. I'm Andy. Um, we're going to obviously be asking some questions today. First of all, thing, let's go with names. All right, so, sir, right here to my right. I'm Arthur Stevens, but you can call me AJ. AJ it is, all right. I'm Bree. I'm Bree. Seth. That's it. Okay, <laughs> just, just Bree, no last yeah. name. All right, cool. All right. I'm Seth. Seth, no, no last name, just Seth. Okay, Seth. cool. I like it. And? <laughs> my name is Trevor Cole. All right, Trevor, oh, and Trevor cool. Cole. Oh, all goodness. right, so we have a last name. A little bit of some vibes going on here with full name, last name thing. Okay, I dig it. All right, <laughs> so next question would be, right off the bat, what's the band name? We are called Invictus. Invictus. Yes. Okay, awesome. And who came up with that name? That would be me. That would be you. Um, I was reading a poem in English class and I just thought like the name was really cool and it had like a ring with me and I guess it means like unconquered in Latin. I was like, that's perfect. So Okay. All right. So you did some research on it. It wasn't just something that you just pulled like a dictionary, boom, (laughs) name. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Cool. So it's got meaning behind it. I like that. Perfect. So guys, what brought you all together? How did you all meet each other? Um, so Trevor and I met first, um, we were just at an open mic, and, um, there was, uh, there was just, like, the lead singer, or my old lead singer, I thought she had, like, a really cool style, and Trevor was playing with her, so I was like, yo, I should ask them if they want to start a band, because it was only two of them, and, um, it didn't happen right away, but, uh, Like, a few months later, uh, I got a text asking if I wanted to join a band called Acetones. And I was like, yeah. And then eventually, like, they moved away, so we had to look for new members. What style of music was this Acetones band? Um, It was like a a punk ska type thing. Okay, cool. Like a Skeletones kind of thing or something, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little punk ska. Okay, cool. And so, Trevor and you met there yeah how did the other two come into the fold um ag was in my sixth grade english class okay so that's just sort of how we met and right then seth and ag were friends so Since. when i met seth we reconnected uh-huh and i met seth in a choir because we are the band for it okay so we met there and we just became friends then i asked him if he wanted to join and he's like sure 
Okay. So we're all band nerds or no? Yeah. 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 I'm that's, not. That's awesome. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. They are. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. So, music's in the blood. That's always a good thing. That's where it starts. Okay. So, tell me about, like, the first getting together of all you guys in the same room, practice, or how, how did this all come to be? How did you guys all make it into a first jam session? Well, like, our first practice, none of us really talked that much. It was just more like, hey, I'm Brie. Um, did you learn the songs? Yeah. And then we just started playing. And then, obviously, like, as time goes on, like, we get more comfortable with each other and we start right. messing around. So. Yeah. So who would you guys say would be the band leader? Brie. Probably. Brie. Oh, me? <laughs> I was going to say you, too. <laughs> Green, okay. Yeah. And um, so tell me, each one of you, who plays what? I play lead guitar. Okay. I'm lead vocals and rhythm guitar. Okay. Seth? Bass guitar. Okay. I play the drums. Okay. Cool. And uh, how long have you been playing your instrument? Uh, about two years. Two, two years? Half. Two and a half years. And what started you on your musical journey? Where, 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 what inspired you to pick up an instrument? Um, this chick in the sixth grade talent show played Creep and all of that song. So. Okay. Creep by Radiohead or Creep yeah, by, by Radiohead. Radiohead? Okay. There's a big difference. You know? Those are both good, yeah, though. <laughs> both, yeah, both good, but... One's better. Very, very different. Okay. So you saw that performance and that just was like, oh, I'm into this. This is what I want. Yeah. Okay. I've been listening to Queen all my life. Okay. Yeah. That true. That's good. All right. And then for yourself, what, what inspired you? So, um... When I started singing, I always just thought like it was really cool, and I try like I always tried to sing. Like I would audition for talent shows and stuff, and never really getting in. So my mom, for my twelfth birthday, got me vocal lessons, and then I started listening to a lot more music. And um, my dad was showing me like a bunch of like '90s grunge stuff, and Foo Fighters is a big one. And I was like, I have to learn how to like do something with that. Yeah. And so I joined the guitar club at my school and they taught me a few chords and then like I taught myself like a lot more and then I got more lessons okay. for guitar. So So Pops turned you on some good tunes it sounds yeah. like. That's awesome. All right. Mr. Seth? Um well What inspired you, my friend? Where was your where did your path begin? Tell me. Give me give me my, the details. One of my cousins, my grandparents have a piano. And one of my cousins was playing the piano, and he is amazing. Okay. Um, and that kind of inspired me to start piano, and my grandma threw me in piano lessons, and then I sort of started teaching AJ how to dabble on the piano. Um, and he recommended that I try bass, and he's been teaching me a lot ever since. Okay. Was about a year ago. All right. So what kind of bass are you into? Like, bass, what kind of bass guitar is your is your guitar? Or dream guitar, or style, or you know, um, give me a little detail on I don't know exactly your bass stylings. Called, but <laughs> okay, um, I love the tone and the type of guitar that Mike Dern plays in Green Day on the okay. album. Okay, okay. So a little more on the dirtier side of like some bass bass stylings. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. All right, moving on, moving on, <laughs> sir. Yeah. Please indulge uh us. I uh, started playing when I was two years old because I started wow. pounding on some pillows and apparently my parents were all like, it's pretty good. So okay. Two I years old. Sort of Dang. You're a prodigy. All right. <laughs> and it just sort of played and it went on from there. Okay. So just pillows and then tell me the next step. Like, did you move to pots and pans and then move to like a kid drum set up to like an adult set? Like, to, give me the process here. You know, uh, went from pillows to one of those crappy $100 kid drum sets you uh -huh. buy at Toys R Us. Yeah, yeah. That, I um, broke it because <laughs> I played it so often. Uh huh. You were going John Bottom style on it and you broke, yeah. the, you broke everything in sight. Yeah. Okay. And then that evolved into one of those Ludwig sets, like the smaller kid size ones. Okay, cool. And then I got a black set from Craigslist a few years after that. Okay. And then I played that for about three years. Right. And then I got a PDP. Okay. And I've just been playing that since. Awesome. Okay, right on. So we all have like a little story behind it. Um, what style of music do we play as this band? I would say like... There's a lot of different like genres going on here, but I'd say mostly uh, 90s grunge and classic rock. Okay. And influence, obviously, I know your take on that, but is that what influenced you, the rest of the band here to, to gravitate towards something like that? 
I grew up listening to like bands that I still don't even know the names of. <laughs> okay. Since, like, I was born because my mom is a music nerd too. So. Okay, right on. I've always liked rock. So just like in the car, mom just bumping tunes or whatever, yeah. and just like I like this. Yeah. Okay. How about you over there? Um, for me, it was my dad playing stuff in the car, and he'd try and get me to memorize the different names of songs, bands. Um, it mostly <laughs> started just like trivia, yeah. kind of quizzing you. It was like, who's this? And I was like, uh... <laughs> but it started a lot with. Um, so was it forced upon you, or no? You were like actually digging that dad was like it was doing this to you first. Okay. <laughs> And then um, my mom started taking a less aggressive take on that okay, and right. was yeah. just listening to it in the car and then it got to the point where my dad stopped talking to, about bands and then he tried like a year later and I was like, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Green Day. Okay, right on. And last but not least. I was born into a family of Rush fans, so Ooh. that sort of gravitated onto me. Wow, Neil Peart, dude. Now you're you're stepping up to a whole other realm there. You know, so like, do you write lyrics, too? Or are you like, no. are you, oh, okay. So I'm, just the drumming aspect of yeah. Neil Peart. Okay. Um, you know he writes lyrics, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, he's he's like the lyricist for that mm -hmm. band. He's been which is, 12 shows, dude. Oh, really? Uh, really? Shows, okay. Oh. He's been okay. <laughs> and do you actually play Neil Peart, like, can you play rough songs? Yeah. You can? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I can. Good for you. Yeah. How old are you? 14. Wow. Awesome, he's, dude. He's okay. Cool. That's great. <laughs> that's a great uh, starting point for you. I mean, if you can play Neil Peart, then you can play Nirvana or Alice in Chains or whatever, because yeah. that's going to be simple for you, basically. It is. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, so have we, as a band, have have we done any shows or anything? What's what's the status um, on? So, Trevor, Seth, and I, we did um, one show without AJ, and that was before like any of us really knew him. Well, they did, I didn't, and um, that went. I would say that went pretty well. Like it was, it was really fun. Like I love performing, and obviously they're my friends, so it's just like. A lot of fun, and then um, I was sick, so that kind of sucked. But um, on my birthday party, instead of um, buying entertainment, we played for everyone, uh -huh, yeah. and that was um, when we really played with AJ for the first time. And like lead guitar just adds like so much more. Oh, so yeah, yeah. it was it was great, really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Coming from a rhythm guitar aspect, yeah. you hear that little extra sweetness laid on top of it for sure. Yeah. So does like school have like a, any like talent shows or anything that you guys are looking to get into at some point down um, the road or? Not, I wouldn't really. I don't think they have talent shows, but we are trying to um, play at next year's homecoming. Okay, that'd be cool. So, um, really quickly uh, on a different route on. What what made you guys do this on your own as opposed to getting into like nowadays there's like a school of rock thing where you can get involved with that and they they supply all the you know back end on that what what made you guys like want to say we want to rock in our own space doing our own thing for me it was like um because I went to a bunch of open mics around the area and School of Rock ran a few of them and the bands that they put together they all just felt like kind of awkward like. Forced. Um, yeah, like forced. Like they put it together yeah. and made them. Yeah. And I was like, well, if you're gonna do that, then there isn't gonna be any like real chemistry. Like you're not. I didn't feel like I would click as well. Like right. that. So I wanted to kind of find like my group. Okay. Like to put somebody else on the spot right now. <laughs> okay. I'm all so. about. I'm all about humor here. I'm all about like let's roast somebody right now. So, this is your time. Um, I met Trevor at an open mic. And <laughs> this was like, um, our old lead singer like walked off the stage and he usually does something with like the house band just because um, they're a lot older and they've been playing for like a long time. And it's like, so, a, we, can, so yeah. we can play Rush with them? Yeah, basically. <laughs> and um, did you, you didn't play YYZ, did you? No, I didn't. You did? Yeah. Okay, so um, after... Uh, like they stopped two of the members got off the stage and he was still sitting behind the drum set and um <laughs> the person who read it his name's kyle and he was like wow can you believe that an 11 year old boy playing rush 
and Trevor so shouts, shouted from, from the drum set, 14. Yeah, and I thought, I thought he was 11 for like an hour after like Kyle said that. And then I didn't find out he was older until I talked to my old lead singer and then she introduced us. And yeah, that, that was really funny. How long was the time gap before you knew Trevor's actual age? It was like an hour and a half or so. Um, uh, You're like, who is this little guy? And he's like, I'm yeah, not a little like, guy. It's like, there's no way. Like, yeah. he's like 11. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's high school. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, I'm a freshman. That's funny. You're like, I may be little, but I kill it on the drum, so <laughs> look out. Awesome. Um, uh, a while ago, probably about a year and a half ago, um, with the old band, um, uh, we had this guitar player who moved down the street from me. Okay. So then we played. And then he wanted to do some solo stuff, so then we just started jamming on stage. But that turned into randomly switching songs and me like being confused, no one staring at us. Mm -hmm. It it was just a train wreck, and I felt really embarrassed after that. Right. So. Okay. See, now we're getting into the inspirational part of the story because I feel like with any story, whether it's like you're 14, you're 30, or 80, I feel like there's always some type of bad stuff and trials and tribulations that lead to the good stuff. And everybody, like, you know, podcasts or storytelling, whatever, people think, like, oh, we just want to shine it all up and just hear hear the good stuff. I, myself, like, want to hear a little bit of, like, the, the follies, you know, the, the things that, like, the heartbreak of what led you to, like, getting into the good stuff. Because, for me, I feel like, you know, these funny stories of whatever, some people don't want to share that part of it. They want to have a polished image and have this, like, thing where it's, like, we're so put together. We are not about that. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. Because I think that more, most people are really interested on how you got to where you're going. And you guys are obviously in the middle of your path here. You've, you've found your way. You're on your way to something. And yeah. as you guys get older and become adults, you know, you guys are going to have all kinds of experiences that are gonna just you know lead to your path and so you're in the middle of it right now really and that's what interests me as far as interviewing you guys you know but um, that is a major part of a kind of uh, um, an influence as far as the the questioning going and stuff on on future interviews and stuff but also just kind of like the content of leading to that I think like there's always like some type of bad that leads to good yeah. And so um, that's kind of why I was like, let's that's, that's, hear some stories here. Let's, you know, there's always something funny that's happened to somebody where, as you guys will know, you'll, you'll either see through your own band or opening up for other bands as you guys play gig. You know, I, I've gig many a gigs. And I've seen people fall on their face. I've seen people fall off stage on accident. I mean, you see these that's funny, like embarrassing things story. where, like, <laughs> no one wants to talk about that. No one wants to bring that part up. When you do an interview with the band, that's something where they kind of, oh, yeah. Jake fell off stage that one time in Long Beach. It was hilarious, you know, and like yeah. that's kind of a funny story. Band talk, but but as far as you know, sometimes people don't really want that stuff getting out. They want I'm cool, we're cool, and we want to look cool and and all that, you know. But you know, you got in life, you have to have a sense of humor. So that's kind of why I was asking, like, you know, let's let's get into the nitty gritty here on some some little stories, you know. Um, so. Anyway, I'm interested in just, you know, like I said, hearing with you guys is how you got together. Um, so tell me, like, what your guys' future plans are. What, what, where, I hate to be like the guy that's like, uh, when you go to uh, interview for a job, and they're like, where do you see yourself in five years from now, mister? Why do you you know, it's like, I don't know, I'm a kid, or I'm a, you know, a young adult. I don't know where I'm going to be in five years, but do you guys see. A major connection with between the four of you do you guys really feel like this is some, something that's going to stick together you guys are really going to take this to the next level the next level the next level i mean it's hard to hard to know anything but in your hearts what do you guys feel like i mean what are the future plans do you guys feel like we're going to we're going to try to book gigs i mean or is yeah. it we just like having fun just doing garage band you know or not garage band but i mean practicing yeah. in your garage kind of so, kind of thing um i think like a little bit of both like obviously it's really fun like jamming with them and that's like when we can kind of like goof around and be ourselves but we also really do like want to get gigs like um we're performing at an art show we obviously do like a lot of open mics um we might have a gig coming up but um we just kind of have to like grind a little bit more mm -hmm. 
And, um, yeah, like, all, it seems like all of us are really serious about music. What's the ratio? Covers, originals, what do you, uh, like, you guys do mostly covers? Or all covers? Yeah, right, right now. now we're mostly cover. It's mostly just, like, uh, I personally am really, like, trying to start um, writing, but so far everything I've really done I haven't liked that much, so I'm not, like... Ready too to gung-ho to it, expose yeah. it to yeah okay that's fine and you know what i mean that's where everyone starts i mean yeah. you, you guys have once you get songs down by other people that's i mean you know a hit's a hit if you can make that hit sound good that's what people are going to like and that makes you guys sound good and that gives you the confidence to maybe at some point put yourself out there it's tough to sit in your room and think that something sounds good but then to show it to other people is a whole nother thing yeah. and then once you get past that then it's like practicing that molding that and making your own original thing like sound good it's very a vulnerable yeah process. it very it very much so is yes and so um but the more you do it the easier it gets yeah. for sure coming from my own personal experience we're at the point now where i i don't have stage i'm there's no stage fright or any like anxiety about that like i mean i have normal things i get nervous about in life but you know going up in front of 600 people psh, no bigs like it's fun to get to that point where yeah. you guys have practiced so much you're so confident in original material at some point you guys will get there where you'll be like this isn't nothing this is like this is the easy part is playing in front of people it's yeah. all the other stuff that you know so um that'll be fun you guys you guys got a long road ahead of you obviously but playing covers there's n there's no shame in that that's always a really good way to start um making covers sound good if people know those songs and that's what's going to get your foot in the door to eventually be able to play your originals because there's so many times throughout a band history where you guys got to start somewhere and there's a mostly the starting place is playing covers and then yeah. you start to write some originals slide them in a little bit play two or three <laughs> covers and slide in an original and two or three covers slide another original to the point where you guys get to the point where people want to hear more originals you know and you can actually go do a gig where you guys are playing mostly all originals and just sliding in a few covers you know so there's a there's an evolution for that for sure and you guys are young enough that you got plenty of time to worry yeah, about all yeah. that stuff so it's really cool that you guys are starting off so young um that's that's it that's you know inspiring for other musicians out there and i want them to know people that are going to listen to this podcast and stuff to know that you know you guys chose to take this into your own hands you guys are i don't know what kind of uh artistry do you guys like are you guys um any artists like as far as drawing or artwork or graphics <laughs> or anything like that in the band all of you i write but I he draws think, okay i think it's like i sometimes yeah yeah sometimes. that's another huge aspect as you guys start to get you know a little bigger a little bit bigger I feel like having that more creative control is always a really good thing. Having some type of artist in the band definitely is cool, you know? <laughs> Whether it be just, like, drawing out some cheesy little flyers that you guys print off at Kinko's yourself or whatever and send out. Whether it be, you know, doing it on the internet and posting things like that way. But as you guys will see with other... I mean, bands that I dig, they have totally and complete control over the art. Yeah. The shirts, you know, the artwork on their website, the artwork on, you know, any of the advertising that they do i feel like that's like something that you know some industry people want to they want to do that they yeah. want to have their promotional kick and it's good to like kind of have a leg to stand on to say no 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 we're in control of the music we're in control of the art we're in control of everything that kind of gives you guys more a uh, leg to stand on and there's just there's just more money involved for you there's more control over your products your branding so keep that maybe in mind as like only, you know, maybe I'm an artist, I paint and I do my own art and stuff. So I've always prided myself on all the bands. I've always done all the flyers and all the artwork and all the, that kind of gig. So it's fun, you know what I mean? It makes it just feel like it's more yours as opposed to somebody else trying to t take control over it. Um, so that would be something I would say stick with and keep keep doing that. Just noodle around on whatever little pictures and graphics and things like that is always really cool. So um, so we do mostly covers. We're going to be working on originals at some point. We've got a few gigs lined up. There are some local things in town that maybe after the podcast I'll kind of like just kind of mention to the parents and you guys so that that way you guys can look into it. But there's, there's avenues for you guys for sure. Um, like 
how how long of a set do you guys have right now? Are you guys how many songs? Like what, um, an hour, half an hour? We could play uh, probably an hour and a half if we stretch everything. Uh huh. So okay. And, and then, like, do you guys stay true to the songs, or is there any jamming that happens? Do you guys add a little um, bit of your own flavor to yeah, like? Yeah, sometimes like um, uh -huh. Trevor does for sure. Like a yeah. lot, like like a little foot triplet there and then another fill of uh -huh. there, but I don't overdo it to right. the point where I just take over the whole song. Yeah, you're just kind of like contributing and... I kind of just like play extra notes like that I think sound good. Yeah. And then what about the guitar solos? I can't play lead. Not uh, yet. We're working on that. We're getting there. Yeah. Um, That'd be I him. Have a lot of stuff. Okay. Solos. Yeah. So you guys do a little sometimes extended little jam part of like a outro of a song or something where you yeah, yeah. just kind of feel it and just let it go where it goes what's really fun is like um when we end one song and like we move right into the next like it's like connected and everyone like goes crazy and they start dancing yeah that's really fun <laughs> yeah that's totally cool awesome so you guys um have you had that experience with the few shows that you played where you feed off a little bit of like that positive reinforcement through whoever's watching you guys have you you know felt any of that vibe i've personally had some instances where i played in front of enough people and had the crowd like kind of not going nuts or anything but like you're feeding off the energy where like for me as a guitar player i've like done things with my fingers that I was like I'll never be able to reproduce that ever again that was a one time thing I was feeling the energy and the vibe of the crowd and the moment and I closed my eyes and I just did something that like I'll never be able to do that again man like that was awesome like sometimes you are able to have that recorded sometimes not where you're like I wish someone was recording that so I could go back and relearn that thing because that was sick you know where you're just like you know have you guys had any moments like that um, or like were you by myself uh like I do acoustic stuff around town sometimes by myself yes like I'll sing something different but like playing wise not really like I'm kind of awkward on stage a little bit like along the lines of like I don't really like know what to do that much and I don't really know how to talk to people but like uh, when I'm playing it's different right obviously but yeah okay well I'm excited to see where you guys are gonna go with all this um, we are gonna go ahead and get some info from you guys and we'll keep updated as we go um, with the bandage how to update you know shows and anything you guys are in, you know into um, if you guys do have any artwork or anything we'll, we'll pass that along and I can be able to put that up on the social media and stuff on my end and just promote you guys um, you know when the when the pops man came into the store and I kind of mentioned that we had the podcast thing going you know he's showed some interest and I just wanted to kind of show the ent the entry level all the way up to like a professional level because I have a couple other people involved with some interviews coming up soon but I really feel like it's cool to just like showcase local talent that's the whole yeah. main focus of the of the podcast for me Temecula based and starting level with you know some youngsters that are just banging away in a garage and just <laughs> learning songs and getting there and we'll definitely keep in touch and do some updates and you know I'm sure we'll, we'll interview guys again in the future and you know and see where, where you guys have evolved to and I'm sure it's going to be something so i'm um, very excited that you guys were able to come in and do this i'm um, thank you for coming in and doing this and um as i say we'll, we'll keep updated with you guys and just see where this all goes for you um so we're gonna go ahead and segue into a live performance we're gonna do a little recording with you guys so we're gonna go ahead and put a cut on the interview here but as i said thank you so much for coming in i really appreciate it and uh we'll keep updated all right guys all right there you have it that was a great conversation i really uh really enjoyed sitting down with these cats uh young talented musicians with a bright bright future these guys definitely have a long road of great music ahead of them great performances great gigs great shows to come you know um i love talking to youth and seeing the next generation that is coming up and will you know be our next rock stars out there in the world so it's really great to sit down and talk to the young talent these guys uh, can be contacted through their Facebook or their Instagram. It's Invictus Official Band. Um, they have a contact number if you know you're looking to book a young band or something. They have a lot of great covers that they play, and 
so they'd be great for any any venue but the number here is 760-270-4639 um, we will also be uh, showcasing all of our talent on our um, podcast interviews here through our Instagram and our Facebook and through the website so feel free to check that out uh, Vibratory Productions is what you know we kind of run that through but we uh, definitely have our own social media going on as well so feel free to check any of that out um, they do have an upcoming gig coming up here Wednesday night at the bridge on 3rd in Old Town Temecula starting around 6.30 and I believe they got some auditions they've been doing for the homecoming at their high school and other shows I'm sure that we will be popping up on our social media as well anything that comes up so feel free to check that out uh, as I said, it was my pleasure really to sit down with these young cats and just, you know, rap music. It's always, always a delight. So uh, I would like to thank all of our listeners, everybody who tuned in for this episode. Uh, many more to come. We are very excited about the future here. And as I said, we have some other things in development. So we'll get everything going. I really appreciate the support. And so, you know, it's just, it's dream come true to be able to put this podcast together and really just kind of, as I said, showcase the local talent, give these people a voice, let their stories be told. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is uh, the Crooked Hearts podcast, and we are out. <laughs>